Hi everyone, we now learn about the binomial cumulative distribution function, also known as the binomial CDF. And to learn about the binomial CDF, I'll start here with a bit of theory and introduce you to the formula or the function that we'll need. And once that's done, we'll work through an example. But if you want to skip straight ahead to the example, I've added timestamps to this video for you to be able to skip ahead and back to any section you want. But now, let's get started. Before this video, we had learned about the binomial probability distribution function, or binomial PDF. And what the binomial PDF allowed us to calculate was the probability that the discrete random variable capital X take on a specific value, which I'll call R. Another way of saying that is that we had seen how to calculate the probability of exactly R successes. So that's what we already know. The binomial cumulative distribution function, or binomial CDF on the other hand, will allow us to calculate the probability that the discrete random variable capital X be less than or equal to some value R. And this is what we learn about in this tutorial. Now, another way of reading this is that the binomial CDF will allow us to calculate the probability that the number of successes be less than or equal to R. Say the discrete random variable X follows a binomial distribution, so I can write X follows a binomial distribution with N trials and the probability of a success is P. Then by very definition, X can take on any of the values 0, 1, 2, and so on and so forth, all the way up to n. And since x is defined as the number of successes in the experiment, another way of thinking of this is within the n trials, there can be zero successes, one success, two, three, four, and so on, all the way up to n successes. Furthermore, the events x equals to zero, x equals to one, and so on and so forth, all the way up to x equals to n, are all mutually exclusive. And I'll just write that they are all mutually exclusive events. Consequently, the probability that x be equal to one or the other of these values equals to the sum of their probabilities. And here's how we can use that for our binomial CDF. We can state that the probability that x be less than or equal to r is equal to the probability that x be equal to zero, plus the probability that x be equal to one, plus all the probabilities up to the probability that x be equal to r. More generally, using sigma or sum notation, we can state that the probability that x be less than or equal to r is equal to the sum from k equals to zero up to r of the probability that x be equal to k. And I'll go ahead and box that. This is the binomial cumulative distribution function. Do make a note of it. Okay, that's it for the theoretical part of this video. Let's move on and see how to use this with an example. In this example, we're told that a biased die is such that the probability of rolling a 6 is p, which equals to 0 0.4. We're then told that the die is rolled 8 times, and we need to find the probability of getting 3 6s or less, getting less than 5 6s, getting between 4 and 6 6s included, and finally, the probability of getting at least 5 6s. Now, each of these four questions serves its purpose, and I would recommend you watch all of them, as you'll be learning something you need to know when I solve each of them. That being said, let's get started. I'll just move this question to the side, like so. First of all, let me say that as we read through this question, it's quite clear that we're dealing with a binomial distribution. Indeed, reading through these questions, we're interested in the number of sixes we can get. And on any one roll of the die, we either get a six, or we don't, so that's two possible outcomes, a success or a failure. And on top of that, it's quite safe to assume that each roll of the die is independent from the previous. So it's quite safe to model all of this with a binomial distribution. 
Now, I'll go ahead and define the discrete random variable capital X as being the number of sixes, so that's number of sixes, sixes, we get in eight rolls. So I'll say we get in eight rolls of the die, or just eight rolls. And so the number of sixes we can get can take on any of the values inside the set, zero, one, two, three, and so on and so forth, all the way up to eight. I'll also make a note of the probability of a success, and that was given here in the question. The probability of rolling a six is 0 0.4, so I'll just write that, p is equal to 0 0.4, and the probability of a failure, which I'll go ahead and call q, is therefore equal to 1 minus 0 0.4, which is 0 0.6. Finally, I'll also specify that the number of trials n is equal to 8, since we're rolling the die 8 times. And of course we can add that x follows a binomial distribution in eight trials with a probability of a success of 0 0.4. All right, all the groundwork is done. Let's go ahead and answer these questions. So I'll start with question one. We need to find the probability of getting three sixes or less. In other words, we need to find the probability that capital X be less than or equal to three. So this would be the probability that the number of sixes we get be less than or equal to three. And there are several ways this can happen. Indeed, we could get zero sixes, one, two, or three sixes. And so this probability is therefore equal to the probability that x be equal to zero, plus the probability that x be equal to one, plus the probability that x be equal to two, plus the probability that x be equal to three. And what's worth pointing out here is that we now have four probabilities to calculate. Luckily for us though, our calculators have a built-in function for the binomial cumulative distribution function. And on my calculator, as well as many others, the binomial CDF is called binomCDF. If ever you're working with a Casio calculator, then it's likely to be called binomial CD. But I'll get back to that later. Let's say for now that we have to calculate this using the binomial probability distribution function. And don't worry, we'll only be doing this for this first question. The idea being for you to see and understand how you would actually go about calculating this if you didn't have a calculator with a built-in binomial CDF function. In that case, we would say that the probability that x be equal to zero is equal to the binomial coefficient eight zero times p raised to the power of zero times q to the power of eight. And we'd add on to that the probability that x be equals to one, which is equal to the binomial coefficient eight one times p raised to the power of one times q raised to the power of seven, plus the probability that x be equal to two, which equals to the binomial coefficient eight two times p raised to the power of two times q raised to the power of six. And finally, we'd add on to that the probability that x be equals to three, which equals to the binomial coefficient eight three times p raised to the power of three times q raised to the power of five. And now taking care of each of these binomial coefficients, you can go ahead and check, but the first one is equal to one, eight one will be equal to eight, eight two will be equal to 28, and finally the binomial coefficient eight three equals to 56. And so we could state that the probability that x be less than or equal to three is equal to one times 0 0.4 raised to the power of zero times 0 0.6 raised to the power of eight plus eight times 0 0.4 times 0 0.6 raised to the power of seven plus 28 times 0 0.4 squared times 0 0.6 raised to the power of six. And finally, plus 56 times 0 0.4 cubed times 0 0.6 raised to the power of five. And by all means check, but with my calculator, I find that adding all that together leads to 0 0.594, where I've rounded to three significant figures. Now, one of the things to take away from this first question is that adding all of these probabilities together can be quite tedious. Luckily for us though, our calculators have this function built into them. And so rather than calculating all of this, with our calculators, all we'll need is the number of trials, the probability of a success, and the value we wish x to be less than or equal to. So in this case, that would be three. 
and entering those three bits of information into my calculator, I get exactly the same result as we just found here. And that would be by entering binom CDF with eight trials in which the probability of a success is 0.4 and the number of successes is less than or equal to three. And that's equal to 0.594. To finish this first question, I should say that some calculators require more than just three bits of information. Indeed, for calculators such as the TI Inspire calculators, you'll need to enter four bits of information. Those are the number of trials, so in this case that would be eight, the probability of a success, so in this case 0.4, but you'll also have to enter a lower bound. And for calculating probabilities like this one, where x is less than or equal to three, the lower bound would be the smallest value x can take, so in this case that would be zero. Finally, you'll be asked for the upper bound, which is the number of successes x has to be less than or equal to, so in this case, three. Once you've entered all of that, you'll press enter and get the same result as what you see here. Okay, that being said, let's move on to the second question. Question two. Now in this case, we're interested in finding the probability of getting less than five sixes. In other words, we want the probability that x be less than five. And this question highlights something quite important. The binomial cumulative distribution function allows us to calculate the probability that x be less than or equal to some number r. And that less than or equal to is very important because it means that as soon as we need to calculate the probability that x be less than some number, we need to consider the probability that x be less than or equal to the number before it. So in this case, we'd state that this is equal to the probability that x be less than or equal to four. And that's equal to the probability that x be equal to zero, plus the probability that x be equal to one, plus so on and so forth, all the way up to the probability that x be equal to four. And using our calculator, we can state that this equals to binom, binom, C, D, F, with eight trials with a probability of a success of 0 0.4, and the number of successes less than or equal to four. And by all means check, but I find that that's equal to 0 0.826, where I've rounded to three significant figures. Done. Okay, we move on to the next question, question three. And in this case, we need to find the probability of getting between four and six sixes included. In other words, we need to find the probability that x be between four and six. Now remember, the binomial cumulative distribution function only allows us to calculate the probability that x be less than or equal to some value r. But calculators that ask us for a lower bound and an upper bound allow us to calculate this type of probability directly. Indeed, all you would have to do is enter the number of trials, so that would be eight, the probability of a success, so that would be 0 0.4, the lower bound, which would be four, and the upper bound, which would be six. And with those four things, you'll be able to calculate this probability in one go. But here, I'm assuming that your calculator is like mine, and it only allows you to calculate probabilities like the one we have here. In which case, here's how to calculate this. First of all, this is equal to the probability that x be equal to four, plus the probability that x be equal to five, plus the probability that x be equal to six. And so the trick for finding this with our calculator is to state that this equals to the probability that x be less than or equal to six, minus the probability that x be less than or equal to three. Indeed, since the probability that x be less than or equal to six would be the probability that x be equals to zero, plus the probability that x equal to one, plus so on and so forth, all the way up to the probability that x be equals to six, and the probability that x be less than or equal to three would be the probability that x equals to zero, plus the probability that x equals to one, all the way up to the probability that x equal to three. By subtracting this sum of probabilities from the first one, we'll be left with the sum of probabilities we're after. And so with our calculators, all we have to do is state that this equals to binom, binom C, D, F, with eight trials and a probability of success 0 
and a number of successes less than or equal to 6, minus binom C, D, F, with 8 trials, probability of a win 0 0.4, and a number of successes less than or equal to 3. And by all means check, but with my calculator and rounding to three significant figures, I find that that's equal to 0 0.397. And that's the answer. Finally, we move on to question four. And I'll just draw a little separation line here in my working. There we go. Now in question four, we need to find the probability of getting at least five sixes. In other words, we need to find the probability that x be greater than or equal to five. Well, that's equal to the probability that x be equal to 5, plus the probability that x equal to 6, plus the probability that x equal to 7, all the way up to the probability that x be equal to 8. Once more, if your calculator asks you for a lower bound for your binomial CDF, then you can calculate this probability directly. Indeed, all you would have to enter is the number of trials, which again is 8, the probability of a success, which is 0.4, the lower bound, which in this case would be 5, and the upper bound, which would be equal to the total number of trials, so in this case 8. Entering all of that into your calculator and calculating, you'll get this probability directly. But again, I'm assuming that your calculator doesn't let you enter a lower bound, and that you can only calculate the probability that x be less than or equal to some number r. And here we're dealing with the probability that x be greater than or equal to some number r in this case 5. And here's the trick. We can state that this equals to 1 minus the probability that x be less than or equal to 4. Indeed, since 1 corresponds to the probability of one of all the possible outcomes occurring, 1 is equal to the probability that x equal to 0, plus the probability that x equals to 1, plus the probability that x equals to 2, and so on and so forth, all the way to the probability that x be equal to 8. And so subtracting the probability that x be less than or equal to 4 from 1, we'll be left with the sum of the probabilities that we're after. And so with our calculators, all we have to do is state that this equals to 1 minus binom CDF, binom CDF, with 8 trials, a probability of a success of 0 0.4, and the number of successes less than or equal to 4. And by all means check, but with my calculator and rounding to three significant figures, I find that that's equal to 0 0.174. And that's the answer. And there we go. That's it for this tutorial on the binomial cumulative distribution function.